Gator Nation football podcast, Florida defense versus USF film breakdown. As always, if you like the content, subscribe to this channel, follow us on social media, drop us a dono on Patreon where you can support our efforts to bring you this content, and check out the podcast each and every Monday where we bring you analytical content on the Florida Gators. It's third down and five, the first third down of the game for Florida's defense. Florida's going to get the stop here primarily because of their defensive line, which got great pressure all day long on USF. On the back end, there's going to be some good and some bad. We profiled Avery Helm last week quite a bit. Let's start by looking at him. He is going to have a nice cross body jam. Take a look. He's outside the numbers. He wants to make sure he pushes the receiver outside as well, which he does. And he wants to use his left arm to jam, which he does right there in case the receiver tries to come back inside, which allows him to stop his momentum and regain top control of the route. Take a look. Crossbody jam, top control. That's perfect. Great job there, Avery. On the bottom side, although you can't see it, we have a nice rally down. You can see this one. There's Bernie, fine rally down there. But then right behind the play, you have Elam, who's guarding a receiver that ran a hitch route, and Elam is rallying down early. There's nothing there. Of course, we do get to the quarterback quickly, but as Florida will happen to have in these scenarios, we do leave a wide open, a wide open middle route here, which really should have been the primary read. There it is. Nice and easy. That's wide open, and that is a first down. So despite the fact that we have 10 players playing good defense or nine players playing good defense, we have Ventrell Miller, who's here sagging to take away this route with the player beyond him, and then no one is here. So Florida gets away with this. This is true in all of football. If you have a good defensive line and QB pressure, you don't have as much time to have to defend, and the quarterback does not have as much time to see the field. So great work by the D-line. Almost great work by the entire defense, but just a few issues there that Florida needs to clean up. USF first down on their next drive. They're going to throw in a little flag football play. Of course, I've spent a lot of time coaching and playing flag football. Frequently, you see two quarterback offenses in flag football. I happen to think two and three quarterback offenses can work really well in tackle football. And here's USF debuting a play. This one's going to function more as a trick play than an actual system or read. But Florida does not handle this well. Here we have Trey Dean. He's going to be the key to this play for USF. They need him to react incorrectly for this to work. And he does. We're going to throw a lateral this way. Florida has more than enough defenders to pressure this lateral here. We're three. There's your blockers. We're three on two. Trey Dean at this point in time needs to recognize this is a backwards pass and he needs to stay home. The running back is busy running a go route right past him. There he goes. There goes the running back. Here comes Trey Dean rallying down to make the tackle. Take a look here. There he is, and he's out of there, and this should be a touchdown. Now, here's Torrance, a player I really like, who I think has been very smart and consistent. He recognizes correctly what's going on there. Of course, he doesn't have any run responsibility in that play. That's partially why he's not coming downhill. This play should be a touchdown. Uh, USF with a great play, great scheme here. I'm sure Florida's happy this happened to them now and not later, but... This has got to be a touchdown. And instead, in completion, Florida dodges a bullet. First down and 10 for USF. It wouldn't be a film review if I don't give a, a chance for Hopper to peg somebody at the line of scrimmage. Here he is. I really love how he comes downhill and tackles. Let's watch his footwork here. Coming downhill, but reading. Reading the gap. Coming downhill. Has a beat on it. Fill and hit. Bam. Down. Hopper is such a sure tackler. I really love, again, week in, week out, what I see on film with his tackling, his ability to come downhill, fill gaps. Not perfect yet. We're going to see in this film review he makes some mistakes in this game, but that's something that's a really nice feature of his game in general. It's third and four. Let's play the numbers game. Florida with one and two. And then on the other side of the ball, one, two, three, and four. So we have four and we have two. Let's see if USF recognizes this. Okay. Look to the sideline. Oh, uh, you know what? Uh, all right. Let's go ahead and just flip the play. Let's move our running back over here. Florida now does nothing. They're not smelling anything here. They move the running back to the side where there's more players. Perhaps that means we want to bring him this way. I don't know. Maybe. Maybe not. Third and four, well, let's see what happens here. There we go, look at that, little handoff. We now have an overload with pressure from this side. 
and we have plus blockers. Not a whole lot even Florida's defensive line can do when they're outmanned here. 3v2. Uh, you've got, you know, here you go. Take a look at this, right? You've got your nickel 10 yards off the ball. Simple handoff. And he's in there. Nice gain. Good play call by USF. Good job to adjust. Florida, once again, doing something they do far too often, in my opinion, which is just get the numbers game wrong. Uh, part of playing good defense is making sure your numbers are sound pre-snap. And in that situation, they weren't. Florida paid the price. USF is going to successfully execute the play that Florida attempted to, which Emory Jones threw a pick on. You can see that on our offensive breakdown. Not quite the same play, but something similar. Elam on this side of the field is going to drop. You're going to see him drop back. Ventrell Miller is going to be down here. In this case, Ventrell needs to make sure that he covers the curl route, but then also buzzes here to the flat, which is what led to the interception for Emory. Florida, in this case, Ventrell is going to carry this for far too long on your screen. He's going to carry it, carry it, carry it, carry it, carry it. Carries it for too long, and then this throw is just too easy. Take a look here. He's carried this ball nine yards up the field, or sorry, he's carried the receiver nine yards up the field, which by the time he rallies down to make this tackle, it's a first down. So that defensive coverage is fine. You can certainly run a dropper here. You can also have Miller, as I've talked about. I like putting hands in, the, in, a, in a trips receiver set. They're five wide here. I like putting hands on the middle receiver. I think it eliminates a lot of the options, but this has got to occur within five yards. You're going to put your hands on him well. You're going to pass him off, and then you're going to come down here. And that way you're able to play both a quick curl route as well as the flat route happens too late. That results in an easy first down for USF. This is something Florida's going to see against Alabama, except Alabama will run these plays even better. And if Florida plays defense like this, it's going to be a long Saturday in the swamp. Florida on first down and 10, playing way off. So we are three on three over here, which is totally fine. You'll, you're happy to play three on three and have them run a screen, but not if you're this far off. We'll talk about what the problem is here in a second. There's your three on three, late to get there. And by the time we tackle him, it's for a first down. So what's going wrong here? Well, in my opinion, what's going wrong here is Moon. Florida frequently does this. Florida frequently has their linebackers, in my opinion, too far inside. If you're going to watch Phil on Alabama, Georgia, Clemson, this linebacker is the conflict defender. He has to be able to play both the pass and the run. But if he's all the way inside the tackles here... He really can't do much to stop this play. If we can simply move a superior athlete like Moon right here to the hash, where he's basically in between the running play and the passing play, take a look here. He can get to this. He can start right here. He can take even one step there, which he did, and really you should have held a second. And then he's able to disrupt this screen. Instead, now with the one step he takes in, and he does get a nice explosion here, He's just too far away. He's incapable of actually getting there. If he starts on the hash mark, he's going to be here. And this play is going to be two yards, which is what you want. Instead, Moon actually never even touches him. This is something Florida does far too often. There's no doubt that Alabama and other teams that run screens, including USF, saw this. Now, thankfully, in this game, Florida would go away from this as time went on. But this is going to be a key element of the game against Alabama on Saturday. Second and one, USF is going to have trips here with a stack set. Florida is going to have a bailing corner. Treves is going to come up here and play aggressively, which I'm going to like. And then a safety over the top. Same problem is going to occur that we just saw before. USF says, this is great. I like this. You're going to give me a bailing corner. I know that he can't make the tackle. And essentially, I'm two on one because look at where your linebacker is. He's just too far inside. Here it is again. There's the ball. Simple throw. Trevez is exactly what he should do, by the way. This is a nice play by Trevez. He gets outside leverage, forcing the receiver to go towards Moon, who's supposed to make the tackle. But by the time Moon touches him, he's basically already got a first down. Now, that's only one or two yards. And of course, the second down and one, you're always not going to stop that. But in general, that play could be stopped even better if you get your spacing right. Now, against a team like Alabama... They're going to get their spacing right, and rather than being lined up right here, they're probably going to be out here. And the further you put your stack, the more in conflict you put your linebacker. 
Again, USF here, right idea, wrong execution. If they push this out four or five more yards, they're going to really put Moon in a conflict, and that play could be more than one yard. It could be 10 yards. That's exactly what Bama does frequently against teams. It's one of the reasons why their vertical passing game is so good. They force you to come up to stop the east-west passing game. Florida's going to need to get that right before that game. It's first quarter at 7 nothing Florida. Again, something we've just seen too often, in my opinion, with Florida's defenses throughout Grantham's era is this very soft coverage. This is an appropriate starting distance here from Chavez playing nickel. He's going to get an out route, and we're going to get another out route that's deeper here. And anytime you see this on your screen, uh, when they run off your screen and you just, you know, you're like, okay, where are they? And then you don't see a white jersey immediately contacting them. You know something is not right. There's a missed tackle by Marshall freshman who's obviously gaining experience but both Trevez and you can't see it here both Trevez and Marshall are late to this they're basically giving up on first down five to six yards if you're going to play off coverage as soon as the receiver makes what you think is this out route break you have a safety behind you you have to get down and apply pressure on that route instead what you see is the out route gets made and the defender is still backpedaling so you had this combination here, and you had both of them still backpedaling, and the ball is thrown, and they have to come catch up to make the tackle. And that is just not quality technique. Too easy early in the game. As will often happen in these breakdowns, I don't know what happened here on defense. I can't tell you exactly who's to blame. If no one's to blame, if it was just a good play by USF, it is a good play by USF regardless. But I'll show you what I know. On this side, we have Elam. Elam is going to drop back into a cover three technique. So he's going to bail and play deep thirds. On this side, we have Helm. Helm is going to take the outside leverage spot, which you would think is going to force this to the safety, which would be what you would do in cover three. And then he would also take an outside third, except he's actually just going to run with him in man. Now, he could be man-to-man -man across that play. Again, I don't know. It's very possible Florida chose to assign that a man-to-man -man route. I can't tell you that. What I can tell you is USF, if that is in fact the case that they knew he was going to play MTM or man-to-man, -man, they nailed it because they're going to run this route here, which is going to require a pass off from Elam, which he should do. Again, he's a dropper. He's going to pass this off to Hopper. In theory, if Florida's in a traditional cover three, Hopper then carries this route to a dropping helm. No problem, you're on top of that route. But if Helm plays man and gets run off, now you're asking Hopper to guard a receiver on a route that looks like that. As long as you have the time, that's not going to fly. Here it comes. There's your route. Goes over top. Hopper recognizes it. He's chasing him. He's way behind him. There's nobody there. And they complete this pass. And there's Torrance, who obviously was in the middle of the field, again, playing cover three. If instead, and you can't see this, Helm runs with this post route... If Helm instead flips to outside leverage, which he should, he runs with this route. As soon as it becomes a post, he passes this route off the to Torrance. He then keeps dropping back. He naturally eats up that route as well. That's the most likely situation, but I cannot tell you for sure exactly what should have happened there because I don't know Florida's play call. Either way, it leads to a nice play design and a nice play uh, by USF. All right, third and five, Florida, 14-3, first quarter. Going to play some man defense here. I like the call. However, you got to execute. So if you are outside the numbers, outside the numbers, typically, again, coaches can override this. I can't know for sure. But typically, you're going to want to force a throw to the outside because the sideline is your help defender. So let's take a look at Helm up here. He is going to start by taking his first step to the inside, which leads me to believe he does, in fact, want him to go outside. Then he's going to just get beat and crossed up. Again, he's too far back. His technique's not right. He's already bailing. He needs to be square at this point in time, making a little crossbody jam like he did earlier. Doesn't do it. Loses the window for the slant route, which is, with the, which is the exact route you want to throw in these situations. So although he's close... Easily preventable. He stays square with his feet here, crossbody jam, and he's good to go. Make sure that this route you're on top of. Now on the flip side, let's take a look at Elam, who's clearly playing outside technique at the start of this. He's also outside the numbers where you typically would play inside technique. Regardless, he's playing on top. Take a look at what he does here. 
he is gonna make sure that he is on this route. Take a look, he's on this route. Throw window much smaller. Same thing we see here from Trevez. He's on top of this route here. So I like Florida going man-to-man -man in this situation. As we've seen before, I don't understand why if they're outside the numbers, they wouldn't be forcing these routes to the outside, especially with the quarterback who's not experienced and is going to have a hard time throwing those routes. Why would you give them the easy one? I don't know. I can't answer that. But again, I can't tell you if Florida is telling Helm to let him inside or not. Uh, for me and I'm out to the numbers, I'm making sure he's forcing him out here and I will live with a comeback route or a go route or a fade or anything out there. I don't want to give them slants or meshes or middle routes. First and 10, Florida just willing to give easy, easy routes here. Just nice, easy, just simple symmetrical routes. Take a look at what we have. There you go. Again, really, they can go either way here. This is Elam off your screen. That's available if you want it. Helms on the bottom of your screen. They'll take this one. That's available if you want it. It's first down. You're taking five yards. Five yards is not a win for the defense on first down. Two or three yards, you'll take that. Five yards, too much. All of this can be stopped if Florida is just not playing quite as soft against this bunch set. If they're just a little bit closer, if they're here and here, you alleviate that problem. Instead, Florida is basically five and eight yards off and they're bailing. Yes, they're keeping stuff in front of them. They're making USF drive. But again, from a, for my taste, that's too conservative. Uh, I think with Florida's athletes, they don't have to be that far off to be able to make sure that they're reading these soft routes that are being run in front of them. Take away the first read, make a quarterback at least go through a progression. Football is a great game in large part because of the chess match, which I love, and the strategy. And coordinating 11 guys to be on the same page and sometimes it's a great game because one guy zach carter is just a monster he's going to just absolutely shed this block and make this tackle and that's it no no soup for you right here let's check this out one more time third down and one he's just going to go hero mode here nope you're not going to block me i'm going to push you three yards back at the line of scrimmage and then i'm going to tackle you and that's all punt the ball please Fourth and three, we're going to get a bunch set here from USF. Something I've just begged basically Florida to do is come up here and nullify the top of this bunch, play man-to-man -man with the top guy. And then from there, you can do first in, first out. You can do a million different things. But this, in my opinion, has got to be right here on the line pressing. Florida frequently doesn't want to do that. On this particular play, there's a couple of good things here to look at. This route is open. You can see Helm again. It's fourth and three. This is the first down line. Helm is a good seven yards off line of scrimmage, eight yards away from the receiver, and on hike, he's going to backpedal. Let's take a look at this. There he goes. You can see, just you can barely see him on your screen. His first step's backwards. I don't understand that. He should be flat-footed, and that way he can come down and make a play. If it's a short-breaking route, he has to break down. That's that he's bailing. It's an easy throw. It's available. Top of your screen, I love this. Here's Elam playing press. Let's take a look at how he does. Outside the numbers, you want to force him to go to the outside, stay on top of the route, cross body jam. There's your left arm on him in case he wants to come back to the middle. He doesn't. Now Elam on top of the route, check, erased. Great job by Elam. He actually forces him out of bounds. Okay, another inexperienced quarterback here. He's also drifting back. Granted, Florida's defensive line's coming at him, but if he just sets his foot in the ground, bingo, set your foot in the ground, stop drifting, get to your spot and throw this ball. He has this play here, but he's going to drift and drift and drift. And now this throws longer. Now he's running. He's running backwards. And he does not complete this. Tons of space there. Lots of real estate that's available. Of course, USF does not take advantage of it. A better quarterback in that situation would have. A lot about Florida's defensive alignment there is great. But again, the question of why Florida chooses to handle bunch routes the way they do, uh, I just don't know. Last but not least, USF, again, is not running a full read on this play. That's why he's not looking to hit this route. He's not there yet. That's one of the benefits of college football is you just don't have the polish and the, and the, and the finish yet from players. USF was, in fact, trying to run a screen. Florida blows that up. There's Zach Carter blowing it up. There's Hopper on it. And that's what he's looking for. So if you look, here you go. He's going to take the snap, and he's looking for this in here. And that's not happening. And so now he's like, okay, I've got to go to my actual, my other route, which is available. It's available early, but pre-snap, he can easily take a look here, see this. And on hike, if I'm him, I take my first step and all I do is read his first step. 
If he goes back, I know for sure he cannot stop my out route and I throw it. Right there, read him. He's not, he's thinking I wanna throw this. Again, it's college football. He's gonna look at his first read, then come off this one later. In the NFL, uh, you wouldn't see that. You'd see a reverse of that even on a screenplay where you would take a look and say, okay, if they're this far off, I'm gonna call a check. I'm gonna look at this first. If this guy bails, I'm sticking this and then I'll come to my screen. I have time to do this, take the snap. Here it is, take the snap. Eyes on him, he backpedaled, perfect. I know I have my out route on my heads are coming here and I'm throwing this for a first down. College football, not happening there. Either way, technique on Florida side there is not good. Better quarterback, better team's going to convert that. Third and seven, second quarter, and now we're talking. You can't see it on your screen, but we have Elam and Press at the bottom of your screen. We have Marshall and Press, and then we have Perkins here playing off man. Perfectly fine to have your nickel off of the man. Uh, you can play levels that way. That way you're allowed not to basically get meshed out or get rubbed on certain routes. It allows you to be more free. If you like your matchup here, Perkins can play off. I'm fine either way with this, uh, but this is this is what you want to see. It's cover one, it's third and seven. Florida's going to bring pressure. Let's see if you're able to complete passes into tight windows. You can't see in the bottom of your screen, but Marshall and Elam win significantly on their men, and that leaves him with the matchup that he wants. Take a look. He's going he's gonna to first peek this one. He's reading Perkins. Take a look at safety, Perkins. Now he's going to come around to the matchup that he wants. Really, you can't be wanting to go against Elam, but that's clearly where he wanted to go. See, back foot hits the ground. That's how you know his primary is. Back foot hits. That's where he wants to go. That's not there. This is nice quarterbacking by him. Right foot hits the ground. Come off the read. Come to your second read and get rid of the ball. Everything about that's fine. Perkins is all over this. You can't see this on your screen. Perkins started here. He softly backpedaled, making sure that he was able to maintain breakdown distance. And as soon as the receiver began to stop his route, Perkins came downhill and was all over it. There was never a time to complete that pass. On the All-22, it's really, really nice stuff. It's one of the reasons why I like Perkins. He is proving to be a very solid man defender in that slot nickel spot. He's aggressive, and I think he's smart. I'd love to see him get more and more playing time. All right, second and six. We have a bunch set, and look at this. We have Perkins lined up right here. He's going to get physical. Bingo. Jam up the top of this. I love this. Love this. Let's see some more of that. Florida then here. Elam's going to be responsible for anything that comes outside, responsible for inside. And they're both going to keep their eyes in the backfield here to take a look at where these routes develop. Jam that top route up. Let's kill that. Here comes Elam coming down, coming down dead. I love that. The ball didn't go there, but I love that kind of action. That's the kind of action you want to see. Really, really nice. Meanwhile, on the left side of the ball, you're seeing a huge win by Florida's defensive line and an excellent play again by Zachary Carter, who's just a beast. Third and nine, Florida's defense again in man. Loving what I'm seeing. I love some of the second quarter calls here. Uh, as I've always said, hey, look, I'll be super positive if I think things are, are being done schematically well. Uh, and th this is what's happening here. So we've got Elam up top, locked up one-on-one. -on -one. We've got Perkins and Helm locked up here. And take a look, and you'll see off the release. There we go. You're not going to see this on the screen, but really all of these receivers are X'd out. Perkins perfectly plays outside technique here. There's a safety over the top. He funnels him right to the safety, exactly what he should do. Uh, in this situation, it's probably likely that Helm ought to be really transitioning this to the inside, but let's not worry about that for now. He maintains nice top control here. And then Elam just absolutely wins this battle. Take a look. He's going to get a nice two-handed jam there. He holds up at the line of scrimmage. He's then going to maintain his outside leverage on the route. The reason he has outside leverage here is he has a safety over the top in the middle. Florida's funneling. Florida's funneling to the safety. He maintains this leverage. And then he actually, Elam is here. The receiver's actually running an out route. So not only does he jam him up perfectly, the receiver's then running an out route, which Elam is already sideline on. And the quarterback, who's about to get nailed by Moon, says, I'm not going to just eat this. I've got to throw it. And that receiver only looks like he's actually open because Elam peeled off when he saw where the ball went. So Elam was glued to him. He peels off to go get the ball. By the time you see him on your camera, that's what you see. And he makes a great pick. That was a phenomenal play um, by Florida's defense there. And again, I love it. I think you're seeing man pressure. 
you're seeing what happens. Turnovers result, sacks result, uh, small windows result, bad throws result. I think that's a good look for Florida and something they should certainly lean into some more. First and 10, Florida really being aggressive here in the second quarter. I loved, again, a lot of what's happening. Now we see the same bunch set we saw before, but up top, Florida's going to be down low, playing this much more aggressively, much more aggressively. Nice work by Bernie to get hands on here. And then Marshall, who's right here. Again, I like what I see out of Marshall. He's just going to have to pick up on the small things as a freshman. Marshall is wanting to maintain outside leverage. That's why he's getting there, which is what he needs. He has a safety over the top and inside. So if this guy is running to the out, he needs to beat him there, which he does. The only problem for Marshall is right here. Rather than simply flipping his hips, he's going to use his arm. And that's a, that's a young guy's kind of thought. I'm going to use my arm. I'm flailing. All he actually really has to do here is flip his hips. Take a look. Just a little bit, and he'll be perfectly leveraged with that route, and this pick would have stood. Instead, they gets called for holding. But as it stands, I like this by Florida. This is what I want to see. I think Florida needs to be making these kind of plays. Be, I'll live with this kind of aggression all day, right? Let teams know that, hey, this is high risk, high reward. Yeah, you know what? You got the holding call, but we also got a pick. Let's go again. Third down and 10. Florida, again, playing man defense here. I'm loving it. So much man. But what I really love about this is how USF runs against the man defense. What does that mean? Your free player is going to be your free safety. He needs to be a good tackler. He needs to rally down and make a stop. Take a look at Torrance. Great tackle. That's what you're looking for on third down. You need your safety to make these plays. That's what's supposed to happen. Excellent tackle, excellent stop. Love that by Torrance. Great play. In comes Timmy McLean for USF. We've got Helm down here at the bottom. Again, I like I like the aggression here coming out in the third quarter. We got Marshall. We got Helm. We're getting the young guys some experience. We're putting him up there in press. We're outside the numbers, which by now you know for sure means we want him to run a sideline route. Helm is going to do well here to make sure he's on the sideline. Doesn't have any contact with him there, though. Take a look at the top of the screen. Marshall with the cross body jam maintains leverage, also slows down the route a little bit, controls the pace. Avery here is just going to run. So again, what you like to see here is a left hand right now on top of this. Doesn't get that. He's a little bit in chase mode. He's still on top, but he's digging hard. In fact, everything about this is perfect. Take a look at this as he comes into your screen here. He's perfect. He just needs to turn facing this way. When you're defending a player on the boundary and you're the corner, your job is, of course, to make sure that you stay to the inside and you want to turn your head this way so you can maintain body contact as you move down the sideline and you can also play the ball. So if he just turns his head around the other way, this could be a pick. Instead, he turns the wrong way and gets a flag. Either way, I like that Florida was doing this on Saturday. I'm very encouraged by how much man we played. These are good things to put on film for your players, a good chance for them to get reps against people that are not on their team. I like the coverage there by Helm. A few things to clean up, but I thought, again, I thought he made progress from week one to week two. He's young. He struggles at times, but I thought there was noticeable progress uh, that he made from week one to week two, and that's what you want to see in these film studies. You want to see players getting better. It's fourth and five. Florida, again, going to play some man defense here which I like, I like, I like. I still wonder how Florida allows players to get inside on these. You're going to see up top, he would get beat for the slant route. Helm's going to have better top leverage here on his. But what I want to focus on is they want to run this little flare, this little wheel route with a running back. And we've seen this before with Florida's film. I don't know why they continue to do this. We're going to blitz the linebacker on fourth and five, who's lined back over the running back. And we're going to have this linebacker cover the running back. Now this creates problems. You saw Florida take advantage of Georgia with this kind of play last year. The timing is not gonna be right here, but this is a tall ask. This running back takes a better angle. He's a better athlete. He gets here faster. He's not gonna get here in time. That's just not gonna happen. You're not gonna get Bernie there. As it stands, this just becomes a drop pass. But take a look at what's being asked here. He's gonna have to go from the middle of the field, really the other side of the center, and then be the clear out here for the first down. Tall ask, does he have the angle for that? Maybe. This is not a well-run play. 
uh, here, obviously, by USF. The angle's not right. The play's not well. But I think you could ask yourself, why do we just not have him cover him and send him on the blitz? I don't know. I don't know why Florida does these little things like this. I like that they're in man. I can't answer that. Second and two for USF. This is going to be the engage seven and leave four. Except USF has one, two, three, four, five. So if you're going to engage seven and leave a guy wide open, you better hope he doesn't find the wide open guy, but he's going to find him. So here we go. Florida gets immediate pressure. He does evade that. Again, if you get this sack right here, of course, you end this play. Doesn't get the sack. Instead, he dumps it off here. And Florida only has four defenders. So kind of tough to stop that. Uh, it's a touchdown for USF. So again, one more time. Take a look at Florida's defense. Two and four. Seven are going. USF with one, two, three, four, five. So if this were the NFL or a more experienced college team, as we've talked about before, and you see this lineup, this is where the quarterback will be able to call smoke route. Basically let him know I'm coming right to you if these guys come. He would take the snap. And as soon as he saw this, foot in the ground, ball out. Again, it's college football. He's going to make the guy miss first, and then he's going to find his guy. It works out just the same, not quite the same level of execution. Second and 10 here in the third. We've talked about this before. Florida will play some zones, and sometimes things just don't quite look right. There's Hopper, a guy who I love. I think he's a really nice player. And you tell me what's happening here. So you're going to get a vertical route, sort of like, take a look. There he goes, a little curl, right? So there's your curl. There's your flat route. Now on this particular play, this looks like, and this looks correct to me, this is what should happen. Here's Helm. Helm's going to come out here and he's going to take away the flat. And that means Hopper needs to take away this curl route. But Hopper is actually really guarding no one. Take a look at where Hopper is. He can't get to him in the flat. There's no running back coming out here to take care of. And there's a guy behind him. So I'm not really sure where he's going there. It's going to work out. Florida gets pressure, and this ball's not quite thrown correctly. But again, let's just look at this pre-snap. Curl, flat route. So Florida can do several things here. You could either have Hopper take the flat. You could have the safety take the curl. You can have the corner take the curl. You can have the corner barrel and cover three and the safety come down. You can do a lot of things, but... Predominantly, these two guys are either going to have it where Hopper takes the flat and then he stays on the curl or he releases any inside route and he takes the flat and then Hopper drops back. In which case on the snap, Hopper's eyes should be looking at the release of these receivers after the play action. Of course, he's got to make sure here he's again, he's a conflict defender. He's got to look at run. Once it's not run, he should be turning his head around to gauge if he has a defender coming into his zone, which should be here. I don't know if this is Hopper again or Helm. Helm immediately, immediately sees inside release and comes to the flat. Hopper's still not looking. Handoff faked. He's still not looking at this point in time. He doesn't need to look back here anymore. He needs to look here. He needs to see what's happening here. He would then see this hitch route and he would just glue on it. Instead, he's guarding no one. And again, Florida kind of dodges one here. So why do I show that? Well, if you want to play a better zone, if you want to watch... What Bama does on film, which we'll see next week, you'll see how they play zone with their linebackers. And often Florida's linebackers just don't look anything like that. Uh, so again, it's hard to say why is that happening? Whose fault is it? What's going on? What's the exchange? I can't know all those things. I can just tell you on film, it's not clean. Third and 10 here. Florida's going to bring a blitz in the A-gap. It's going to get home. Only key here is now that we're playing an athletic quarterback, you know you're bringing two. Here comes the safety blitz. Here comes Hopper. You need to trap the quarterback in between you. But Hopper's going to take a route to where the quarterback is. He's a mobile guy instead of where he might go. So he needs to be on his outside shoulder, outside shoulder, outside shoulder, and then we will take him out. Instead, he's going to come inside. You can look at his ankle. He's on the other shoulder. Easy juke move. He escapes. Nice fill here from Dante. And that's going to end that play. So nice pressure there at the defensive end spot to make sure this gets flushed out. Uh, nice blitz from Florida. They get home. If you want the perfect situation, you're hopper and you're watching film, you got to think, hey, I'm playing an athletic guy. If I've got two guys blitzing, I need to make sure that I stay to the outside shoulder. 
First and 10 from the one yard line, a popular place to take a play action shot, which USF will do here. Here we go. Marshall, outside the numbers, outside technique and leverage, allowing this to be funneled to the safety. Check. On this side, Perkins, outside leverage, funneling to the safety. Check. So far, so good. Everything we can see on the screen is actually perfect. Great. Great defense. Everything you want. But again, it takes 11 guys. And what you can't see is what you're about to see is this. Mordecai McDaniel. Getting some experience here. He's in the game. And he's got a nice lesson on film. Nice catch. Again, this is good defense by Marshall. Take a look at Marshall. He's right where you want to be. He's on the outside. His safety should be here and not here. That's where you got to be. If you are playing cover one safety in this case, where you're funneling guys, which Florida's doing here, or cover three, depending on it either way, you've got to be the top guy, especially in the formation there, and especially the way Florida's playing on the line. You must always be on top. Be the last guy back. Be the last man back. Be the top of the defense. Do not get sucked under for this dig route. You've got to be on top. He gets sucked under, and this winds up being a really nice pass and a really nice completion. But I like the coverage here from Marshall. So again, if you're watching this, this is not on Marshall. This should be a safety over the top making a play or really just an incomplete pass because there's nowhere to go. So again, it takes all 11 guys. Start of the play was excellent. 10 guys were on the same page. One guy goes wrong. The play doesn't work. All right, time to give the mountain of a man, number 21, Desmond Watson, some love. Take a look at this. First, that's a big man. Second, that's the line of scrimmage. We are now two, three, four. Four yards behind the line of scrimmage. Check a look at this penetration from our defensive tackles. We've got pursuit from Bernie. He's trying to escape, and he's thinking, okay, clearly I can outrun Watson here. Watson is not going to get me. My dear Watson can't get me, except don't underestimate his athleticism. Whammo. That's a heck of a play. I mean, look at, look at this man. Just look at him. And look at this move right here. One more time. Take a look at this. He's going to peel off the lineman, one arm, and no, no, you're not going anywhere. I'm going to roll over here. I'm going to show you my lettuceism. Take a look. Boop, boop, boop. I'm good. I got you. That is a big boy. That's a great play. Good work there, Desmond. Third and 10, and all of my dreams have been realized. Take a look at this. On the podcast for many moons, I have begged for this. I have dreamt of this. There it is. That is press man across the board, even from our nickel. Perkins, who's my boy. I'm a happy man. This is great. On top of that, I like it even more. We're going to employ coming into your screen, although you can't see him. We have two safeties here, one and two. We're going to employ one as a rat or a robber to come take this middle route, which I love. And I've got to cover one single high safety. And then, of course, as a running quarterback would like to do, if he sees man, he's thinking, you know what? I don't really want to throw against this. I'm just going to run. And we have a really nice play here from Bernie. Good recognition from Bernie. He sees the running back is not running a route. He's clearly blocking. That signals to him that he needs to come under control, which he does. And he makes this tackle. Really, really nice play. Good fist pump. Well earned. Nice stop on third and 10. I love the aggression there from Florida. That's not going to be something you can run against every team, every play, but I think it's something that should be run a much heavier percentage of the time, especially against teams that run a lot of spread. I love it. Very happy that we got to feature it here on the breakdown. So one of the best things about doing this film study is getting to see who shows up on film each and every week. You're looking for consistency, and here is Perkins getting some play in the fourth quarter. Third and nine, game is out of hand. But he is going to get off this block, and you're not going to see it on your screen, which is really unfortunate. As soon as he recognizes what this play is, he comes downhill, he gets off the block, and he makes an absolute hero tackle here. Again, you're not going to see him. There's the lineman coming out. All you're going to see is he's, there he goes, coming off the block. Here he is, 
coming off the block. He's not a free defender here. Again, you're expecting a safety or a linebacker to come make this play that's not already blocked. He is blocked. He's going to beat the blocker, and then he's going to make the tackle. Bingo. Nice work by both him and, take a look right here, also a very, very nice play made there. And that's what that's what you want to see. If you're getting your time there at the end, and you're Patrick Moore, and you know really you're just getting a chance to come into the game as a redshirt senior, you want to do the right thing. And he does do the right thing. He stays to the outside. He holds his ground. Perkins comes flying in because everything is right technique-wise. He gets a chance to help, and then Perkins finishes it. I love to see that. I love to see this kind of stuff. Clean, solid football, great effort, great technique, and it all pays off for a nice stop on third down and nine. Although I went this entire breakdown without mentioning it, I should mention it now at the end. Florida did struggle to line up in this game, especially early. They were late to get some play calls. Now, this is the very end of the game. It's 42-13, but if you're the gambling type, this perhaps matters to you. You want Florida to cover. You'd like to get a stop. Uh, at any rate, Florida not really sure what's happening here. There are three receivers here, currently verse two. Let's get that right. You can tell Perkins is telling him, come on, let's get over here. Let's get this right. The ball snapped. We're not really ready, but most importantly, let's play the numbers game. USF, one, two, and three. Florida, one, two, maybe three. Kind of in the eye formation here on defense, but yeah. I mean, no one is even remotely going to set the edge here. Take a look at this. And he's just going to walk right in the end zone. No edge set here. Again, your defensive lineman's too far interior anyway. They can double team him, and now you're going to have to have this be made. But linebacker's going to stay inside, and he's really just watching and buried. So nice walk and touchdown from USF. Again, end of the game, situation you can show your team on film. Hey, look, when you see this alignment, we've got to make sure we get ourselves aligned correctly, make sure you're in the right technique, filling the right gap, etc. cetera. Uh, it is game two. So with that, I thought there were a lot of things in this defensive breakdown that we got to cover that we have not covered before. Things are definitely different from a schematic standpoint on some things, and things are definitely the same. What really is going to matter is what we put on film against Bama, who do we choose to employ personnel-wise? What kind of strategy do we use? Uh, how, do we, how do we choose to try to win the game? And that will be something, of course, I will cover and bring to you next week. As always, thanks for watching. If you have any feedback, comments, commentary, whatever the case may be, go ahead and reach out to me via social media or this very channel. That's all for now. I'm James for the Gator Nation Football Podcast, and I will see you next week. Next week.